It's the beginning of a new school year, which means we got to start from the beginning. We're starting with data representation. Uh, so from the Cambridge syllabus, here's what they expect. You should be able to show an understanding of binary magnitudes and the difference between the binary prefixes and decimal prefixes. So we're going to be looking at bin binary magnitudes, and then we got to understand the difference between kibby and kilobyte, mebibyte, megabyte, gibbybyte, and gigabyte, tebbybyte, and terabyte. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. So binary numbers are represented as bits, zeros and ones. Each digit, the one or the zero, takes up one bit of space. Now in binary sign and magnitude, the leftmost bit represents the sign with the remaining bits representing the binary value. So if the leftmost bit is a zero, we know we're dealing with a positive number. If the leftmost, if the leftmost bit is a one, we know we're dealing with a negative number. So let's look at an example using eight bits. So here's our first number, positive 25. The plus sign tells us the leftmost bit must be a zero. The remaining seven bits give us the calculation for the number 25. So here I have an eight bit uh, chart here just for visual representation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bits. So let's start with the sign. I know that we have a positive sign. So I know right away this is a zero and I'm looking for the value of 25. Can I use the value of 64 to get me to 25? I cannot. What about the value of 32? Nope. Can I use the value of 16 to help me get to 25? I sure can. So all I'm going to do is subtract six. Well, let me put a one here so I know I used it. 25 minus 16, I'm left with nine. So now I'm no longer looking for the value of 25 because I just used 16. I have nine left to go. I need to get me some combination that will get me to nine. What about eight? Can I use an eight to get me to nine? I sure can. So then I do nine minus eight, which is one. I'm now looking for the value of one. That's not four. That's not two. And that is one. So my binary number for our binary sign and magnitude for positive 25 is going to be zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, one. That is the binary sign and magnitude binary number for 25. Now, our second example would be great if it was a negative number. Ah, here's one, negative 25. The negative sign tells us the leftmost bit must be a one. The remaining seven bits will give us a calculation for 25. Same chart here. I know right away because I have a negative sign, it's going to be a one. Now I'm looking for the value of 25. I can't use 64. I can't use 32. I could use 16. I need to use 16, which will get me nine again. This should look very familiar. And then the eight and the one, which will get me to uh, nine. Nine minus eight is one. And then one minus one is uh, zero. It gets me all the way to 25. So that is our binary sign and magnitude for negative 25. The only difference is the sign. In the previous problem, we had a, uh, a zero indicating positive. This time we have a one. The binary value of these seven bits is exactly the same. Let's take a look at another example. How about positive 68? So the plus sign tells us the leftmost most bit must be a zero. The remaining seven bits give us calculation for 68. So I have a positive sign. This becomes a zero because I'm dealing with a positive number. And then I need to get to 68. Will 64 help me get to 68? Or it sure will. And then all I'm left looking for is the number four. Is this a four? Nope. No, no. Here's my four. And then my binary sign and magnitude binary number is zero one zero 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 one zero zero. That will give me positive 68. Now let's take a look at our last example, our fourth number, negative 35. The negative sign tells us the leftmost bit must be a one. The remaining seven bits will give us the calculation for 35. So I know this is going to be a one that deals with the negative sign. Now what I'm looking to do is get the value of 35. Well, 64, can I use that to get the 35? I can't. What about 32? I sure can. And when I use 32 or subtract 32 from 35, that leaves me three. Can I use 16 to get to a three? I cannot. What about eight? Nope. Four, I can't use four, slightly too big. Can I use a two? I sure can. So then I do three minus two. I'm looking for the value of one, and there it is. So my, for bi binary sign and magnitude, when I'm working with that, my binary number would be 101, 
0011. It is that simple. Start with the sign and then work out the binary value for that number. All right, let's move on to those uh, prefixes. Um, oh, this is important. We got to talk about why you don't want to use binary sign and magnitude. It can lead to a positive zero. And you may be saying, well, how in the world can you have a positive zero? What about a negative zero? Here's how you get a positive zero. We said, oh, it's a positive zero. My sign would be a zero. And all of these would be zero. In binary sign and magnitude, that's a positive zero. For a negative zero, my value, binary value, are all zeros again, because I don't have any of these values, but it's a negative zero. That means my sign is a one. That's how you can get a positive and negative zero. It's, it's, it's almost, there's a more efficient binary system that we'll be looking at in the next podcast. But Cambridge wants you to know how to use binary sign and magnitude. This is how you use it. It's that simple. All right, let's dive into these prefixes. So binary versus decimal prefixes. You've probably heard these terms before, such as kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte. You might have heard those terms before, and you may be saying, okay, I know a little bit about those, or maybe you know what they are, or maybe you thought you knew what they were. But what about these terms? Have you ever heard these terms before? Because not many people are familiar with them. Kibibyte, mebibyte, gibibyte. Tebby bite. What about those terms? Well, what's the difference between them? So around 1998, the International Electro Electrotechnical Commission stated binary prefixes refer to powers of 1024. The National Institute of Standard Technology around the same time in the US uh, declared that the metric system prefixes should be used in the decimal sense. So this brought about those new binary terms, kibibyte, mebibyte, gibibyte, and tebibyte. So decimal prefixes are the ones that you're familiar with. So think about the prefix kilo. What does that mean? Most people will tell you that means a thousand. So a kilobyte isn't 1,024 bytes because it's not, it's a decimal prefix, not a binary prefix. So a kilobyte is technically 1,000 bytes. A megabyte is technically 1,000 kilobytes. A gigabyte is technically 1,000 megabytes. A terabyte is technically 1,000 gigabytes. Now, the binary prefixes work a little different. So binary works off the power of 1,024. For example, I can take two to the power of something and get 1,024. I cannot take two to the power of something and get all these numbers specifically when I break it down to the amount of bytes or bits. So eight bits make up a byte. A kibibyte is 1,024 bytes, working off two to the power of 10. A mebibyte is 1,024 kibibytes, working off two to the power of 20. A gibibyte is 1,024 mebibytes, working off two to the power of 30. A tebibyte is 1,024 gibibytes, two to the power of 40. So when people use these term megabytes, you're not really sure if they're using the correct term or they're, if they're not. And here is uh, why. Um, just remember before we move on, computers deal with these, uh, with these things in binary because you can get exact measurements with the power of two when we're talking about whole numbers. Now, industries have largely ignored the new words and the new system. Because you might be saying 1998, that, that was over 20 years ago. What are they doing? Uh, they're just ignoring it. Uh, and this has led to class action lawsuits. Uh, for example, companies have advertised a one terabyte hard drive, but if you look at the drive, you'll notice it's significantly less. They'll say, hey, here's a terabyte. One terabyte should be one trillion bytes. But when you look at the hard drive on the computer, you'll notice it's really around 931 Gibby bytes, not taking into account the firmware or whatever's preloaded onto the uh, hard drive. So when you get it home, you're like, well, this is a one terabyte hard drive. I plug it in, it says 931 gigs. What's going on? They're using two different systems because they're ignoring the new system. It sounds a lot better for them to say, hey, here's a terabyte, rather than saying, hey, here's 931 gigs, thinking you know what it means. Now, currently DVD, Blu-ray, optical disc, they use decimal prefixes. So when you look at a 4.7 gig disc, it's actually equivalent, equivalent to about 4.38 
uh, Gibby bytes, not 4.7 gigs like you think it is. CDs, they're on binary prefixes. They're, they've been using it since the beginning and they're still using it today. So a 700 megabyte disk that you see actually has a capacity around 700 MB bytes, which is about 730 megs. You're actually getting more megabytes than you think uh, you were to begin with because they're on the binary prefix, not the, dec not the decimal prefix. Now, when you go to shop, realize what you're actually buying. You may be getting less than what you think you are. For example, our school brought, bought us brand new computers and they say, hey, you're getting a 256 gig solid state drive. Well, 256 sounds like a lot, and it is uh, for solid state drives at the time of this recording. But when we look at the capacity, we see that it's really only about 236 Gibby bytes. We're missing over, well, we're missing about 20 that we thought we were getting that we weren't. So when people are talking about, you know, hey, here's a terabyte of space, you have to ask yourself, do they really mean a terabyte or do they mean a tebby byte? For example, I have uh, Xfinity because that's the only internet service provider around here uh, where I currently live. And they said, you're getting a terabyte of bandwidth a month. And I asked them, well, what does that mean? How many gigs is that? And they said 1,024. So they're using the decimal prefix when really they should be using the binary prefix. But a lot of people just have ignored that system, which is why you don't really hear those terms a lot, but you need to know those terms and the difference. That's going to be it for this. If you have any questions, post a comment below. We'll see you guys in the next one.